family, I'm Mercy Desdemona and today we are doing another episode of True Horrors. In this episode we are talking about the Elsie Sigel case from 1909. Now this case is interesting because some say that it was cut and dry, that the man who did it was obvious, he was just never formally arrested. Some say it's an unsolved murder, that it could have been somebody else. And there's a lot of conspiracy theories that come up with this case, so we will discuss it today. And at the end of this episode, I would love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. Let's get started. Elsie came from a very prominent family at the time. She was very wealthy. Her mother Anne took her to do missionary work in the Chinese section of New York City at the time where they would teach them English, Christianity, and Americanize them. Remember, this is 1909, so things were vastly different than they are today. Back then, interracial couples were very frowned upon. Um, Elsie could lose her friends, her status, her family, everything, if it was found out that she was secretly seeing a man named Leon, who was a Chinese immigrant. She was doing missionary work with. So those two had to sneak around. About a week before she disappeared, she mailed a telegram to her father saying that she would be back with the end of the week. So thinking nothing of it, they did not worry about her until she didn't come home. Now we meet Sun, who is a restaurant owner who is also the cousin of Leon. Leon happened to reside above his restaurant, and when he hadn't seen his cousin for a while, he kind of got curious, and so he decided to go upstairs, knock on the door, and investigate. When he knocked, there was silence. The door was locked, and coming from the inside of the room was a very putrid stench. This obviously alerted Sun, and he went ahead and contacted the police. The police came over, broke the door, open and saw nothing but a trunk tied with rope as if it was being prepared for a shipment. So they cut the ropes and they opened the trunk to find the decayed, decaying body of a young woman who was partially dressed. There was a noose across her neck which looked like it was digging into the skin and they noticed that the corpse had beautiful teeth, and this had to be somebody of high-end nature. Of course, Anne and her husband did not want to claim it as Elsie. They didn't want to believe that she had gotten herself in this position. So at first, they did not claim the corpse as Elsie's. Upon further investigation, they found a few letters from Elsie. See, this Leon guy had lots of letters from women admiring him, and 35 of them they say, were from Elsie. One of them had a specific wording to it. Let me find it here. It said, Just think of the sacrifices I made for you, my family, my friends. For God's sake, don't forsake me. So I'm wondering if Elsie was going to become public about their relationship and things were getting tense between the two, if Leon was maybe using the admire, admiring women for some sort of monetary gain, I don't know. But there's absolutely some friction here according to the letters. And then inside the room was a bracelet with the initials EJS. That is when Anne decided to claim that the body was indeed Elsie's and of course this poor woman ended up in the psychiatric hospital afterwards because she blamed herself for Elsie's death. She thought that if she had never introduced her to missionary work her daughter would have still been alive and well and lived a full and happy life. So, sorry looking at my notes here. So at that time this went on the news in the newspapers, it quickly became so focused across the nation at the time, and we go into meeting up with this guy, Mr. True Game. Now this man came forth with some information, and he admitted to having an affair with Elsie, and 
See, this is where some of the research is iffy because in one side they they say that at a party, Mr. Leon told Elsie and Mr. Gaines that if he saw them together again, he would murder them both. And in some research, it says that he was receiving anonymous threats that if he was seen with Elsie again, they would both be dead. So I don't know which out of the two in the research is real. We'll probably never know, uh, but that's where it gets a little fishy with this case. So again, making it clear that Elsie was definitely in a love triangle of some sort. And it was really strange because she would write Mr. Gaines that she only loved him while at the same time saying to Leon that she would never give up on him. So I'm not sure what exactly, what shady business was going on there. So then police questioned Mr. Chong Singh, who was a high-end restaurant owner. And he said he lived in Leon's building. He told the cops that he was able to peek in at the incident and saw Leon struggle with Elsie and watch the strangulation. He went on to say that he didn't partake in the actual murder, but he did help put her corpse in the trunk. Now, at first police were relieved and they were thinking, okay, fantastic, we got the full story. But the problem was, upon inspection of the door, the way that he said that he spied on them wasn't possible and then he kept changing his story and he became a very unreliable resource. So they ended up not listening to anything that he had to say. So everything pointed to Mr. Leon, who could have in a jealous rage went ahead, found her again with Mr. Gaines or found letters that she was sending to Mr. Gaines and did the strangulation himself. And that's what a lot of people think and that he took off and he wasn't able to um, be arrested. So here are the conspiracy theories. There's three of them that I found. One, Leon took Elsie to Washington where they were both murdered because the, the telegram that she sent her family came from Washington. So people are thinking that maybe those two took off, but then who is in the trunk? Did they just murder somebody at random? Like, I don't understand if they just took off to Washington and they both got murdered. Why would you have this trunk with this corpse in his room? That To me, that doesn't make any sense. Two, Leon fled back to China after, seeing, after selling Elsie into a brothel, which could have made sense. That could explain why she was in a trunk. Maybe something went wrong and they shipped her corpse to him. I don't know, maybe. And three sounds like super, super far-fetched, but they both took off to China and lived happily ever after. I don't think that conspiracy is true at all. I don't think number one makes a lot of sense, but number two, if he found this high-end girl and took her, you know, you never know if he was angry and found her being in this triangle, that could be. Um, and that's all shady business that unfortunately some people end up dead. So who do you think did it? Was it Mr. Leon? Did he murder her and then take off and never got arrested? Is it clear as day that he did it? Was it Mr. Gaines who found out that Maybe she was still talking to Leon, but because Mr. Gaines was kind of in the background and not the primary focus, he could get away with it and he could frame Leon for it. Or, you know, was it the unreliable Mr. Singh? We don't know. Maybe he did partake in it. Maybe he did do it. Uh, maybe he had some admiration for her and she wasn't giving attention. We don't really know because all the players in the game here. Some say the case is cut and dry with Mr. Leon, some say it's not. Please tell me what you think down below in the comments and I will see you 
next time on True Horrors.